Well, welcome back. Now this is the pre-section video for section 5.5, .5, integration by use substitution. Let me give you a gist of what's going on thus far. Section 5.3, we introduce the antiderivative with this Riemann sum stuff and be able to actually calculate the area under a curve between A and B. So we've been going back and talking about antiderivatives, integrals, evaluated over bounds, which ties into chapter 4.7 from Calculus 1. So we've been teaching you guys about integration. But you've been integrating thus far some simple functions. Section 5.4, we went into some of the applications of this, Fundamental Theorem of Calculus Part 1 and Part 2, uh, that reinforces the idea of area under curve and the idea that the derivative of an integral ends up canceling because they truly are uh, uh, opposite operations here. But now, section 5.5 .5 is about how to integrate harder stuff. This is one of the more important sections out of your textbook for Calculus 2, because this begins the leading into all the other sections from Chapter 5 and Chapter 6, which is this idea of how to integrate hard stuff. So first thing, the, num the U substitution technique is the number one technique of integration. You must get this stuff down. So let's just write down some of the basic formulas. I'm not going to write down all the formulas, but let's write down the basic formulas that you have memorized. But I'm going to rewrite them in terms of u. For example, the integral of a constant du, so I'm changing my variable to u's, would be a constant times u plus c. The integral of u to the n du, u is the variable, but it's raised to a power. You add 1 over add 1, that would be u to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus c. The integral of 1 over u du, that was uh, when you integrate, you know, again, just changing our standard x's to u's. This will be the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. The integral of e to the u du is equal to e to the u plus c. We have our trig functions that we have memorized here, so let's write those guys down. The integral of the cosine of u du is equal to the sine of u plus c. The integral of the sine of u du is equal to the negative cosine of u plus c. The integral of secant squared u du is equal to the tangent of u plus c. The integral of cosecant squared of u du is negative cotangent of u plus c. And with trig, it comes in sixes here. There's two more. The integral of the secant of u times the tangent of u du is equal to secant of u plus c. And the integral of cosecant of u cotangent of u du is equal to negative cosecant of u plus c. And there's a lot more formulas that your professor will go over with these particular guys. Um, you know, you got your arc tangent formula with the arc, the inverse trig formulas, which are arc sine, arc tangent, arc cosine, so forth and so on. And we can go into those. And so there's a lots of formulas you have memorized, but honestly, they're kind of limited to about I don't know 17 formulas at the end of the day when your professor writes all these formulas down that, again, you are supposed to have memorized. But these are your basic ones right here. Now, here's what the goal is. The goal is to take these and integrate much harder stuff than you've been integrating. The trick have been the last few sections has been when you need to integrate something a little bit harder, you just did algebra on it, fold it out, and didn't integrate each term. But what happens when it gets harder than that? So, here we go. Let's take a look at this first problem. We want you to find the integral of a 5 e to the 3x dx. Now, I've got a formula for e to the x, but I don't have a formula for e to the 3x. So what we're going to do is we're going to do something called u substitution. You're going to try to turn this problem into one of these rules. That's the goal. And especially if it being doesn't have trig in it, it's going to be one of these guys here. Well, this one has an e, so the trick is, and this is what your professors will be going over in class as they practice this with you guys, what are you going to let u equal to? In this example, you should let u equal to the exponent, 3x, so I can turn this into one of these e to the u kind of problems. So here's the trick, step by step. Step one, you've got to figure out what u is. Step two, here comes your calculus one. You've got to do du. 
and D does stand for the derivative. So the derivative, calculus one, derivative of three x is three dx. The next step is you want to substitute, u substitution. So you've got your u du. Traditionally, we want to move this constant to the other side so you can replace that dx. So to move a three dx, three to the other side, I want to divide by three. That's going to give me one third du equals dx. So when I substitute, five is a constant. So this would be integral, constants hold over. This is e to the u, e to the u, and dx gets substituted with one third du. So I wanted you to see the literal substitution of this formula to try to turn it in from this form to a u form. But now let's clean this guy up. This becomes 5 thirds, pulling all my constants, 5 times a third is 5 thirds, and constants go out front of an integral of e to the u du. And you will notice that on this particular problem, when I do the appropriate u substitution, it turns into a formula up to a constant out front that I have memorized. What was that integral of e to the u du? It's e to the u plus c. So this would be 5 thirds, leaving your constant over e to the u plus c. But wait a minute, be careful. This is my answer, but you got one more step to do. The original problem was in terms of x, therefore I expect my answer to be in terms of x. So the last step you do is back substitute. So I've got my integral, and then I'm going to back substitute. So this will be 5 thirds e to the u was 3x plus c. And there's my solution. So if you want steps, I'll give you steps. Step one, figure out what u has to be. Step two, take du. Step three, move the constant to the other side. Step four, substitute. Step five, clean it up. And if you do this right with u substitution, when you substitute and you clean it up, this should turn into a formula that you have memorized. Apply the integral formula you have memorized, and then last step, back substitute. That's the, thing, the steps that you do every time with a U substitution problem. So let's take a look at question number two here. The integral of x cubed times the sine of 2x to the fourth dx. This is a trig function. When I'm dealing with trig functions, traditionally I want to let u be the angle on the trig function because I'm trying to turn it into a problem like this would be a sine u problem. So I would let u equal to 2x to the fourth. But then I'm going to take du, take my derivative. The derivative of 2x to the fourth, back to calculus one, bring down your power, multiply, that'll be 8x cubed. And you put a dx on there because you're taking derivative with respect to x. The next step is you want to move the constant to the other side and just solve for the x cubed dx. Now here's the real deal with u substitution. Whatever you let u equal to, the du up to a constant should be in the problem. Since I let u equal 2x to the fourth, the du, which is 8x cubed dx, up to the constant, the x cubed dx, must be in the problem. That's a pattern of u substitution, which in this problem it is. So I'm going to divide by 8 on both sides, move my constant to the other side, so I get 1 eighth du equals x cubed dx. Now, let's substitute. This is the integral. The function can't change. This was a sine function. So this will be the sine, but the 2x to the fourth got replaced with u. And the rest of it is x cubed dx. And the x cubed dx is going to get replaced with 1 eighth du. So you're substituting it in to try to turn it from the x world to the u world. Constants get to go out front, so we clean this up. This becomes 1 8 the integral of the sine of u du. And the ultimate goal of this is to take, quote unquote, a harder problem with the appropriate substitution techniques. It should clean up to a simple problem that we have for a formula that we have memorized. What's the integral of the sine of u? That would be negative cosine. So 1 8 is a constant. Negative goes out front. Cosine of u. No bounds on this stuff. Plus c. And what is the last step I have to use before getting my complete answer is I need to back substitute to turn the problem back in terms of x. So this will be negative 1 8 the cosine of 
2x to the fourth plus c. And there's my problem, my solution. All right, hopefully this makes sense, but again, catch the steps. So let's, let's do another problem. Here's one. What is the integral of cosine cubed x plus a times the sine of x dx? Well, first off, this guy has a power. Now, this is ma lazy mathematician notation, cosine cube x times the sine of x. But what that power really means is cosine of x quantity cubed. We just use this notation so we don't have to write an extra set of parentheses. So this is the integral of the cosine of x cubed times the sine of x dx. Now, traditionally, with u substitution, you always want to let u equal to the hard stuff. The hard stuff inside the parentheses. You begin, and that's what your professor is going to be teaching you about catching the patterns of, in terms of what should you let u equal to in u substitution. But the real pattern is one, I will always let u equal to inside the parentheses. And inside my parentheses is this cosine of x. So I let u equal cosine of x, and then I take the derivative. What's the derivative of cosine of x? Up, oh, think calc 1. And now you can begin to see how for some students this can be difficult because I'm doing calculus, second, second semester at calculus, integral calculus, then I got to do derivative calculus and it's all combined together. So keep it straight. The derivative of the cosine of x is negative sine of x dx. And notice whatever I let u equal to, du up to a constant butter be in the problem. There's my sine x dx waiting for me. I want to get the constant that's negative understood to be negative 1 to the other side, so I'm going to divide by negative 1 on both sides, give me negative du equals the sine of x dx. So when I substitute over here, this becomes the integral of the cosine of x was u, so this is now u cubed, and the sine of x dx gets replaced with negative du. The negative implies negative 1 is a constant, it goes out front, so this becomes the negative the integral of uh, u cubed du, and now it's a simple integral that we can actually do. What's the integral of uh, negative u cubed du? Negative is a constant. Integral of u cubed is you add one over add one, u to the fourth over four, no bounds, so plus c, indefinite integral there. And the last step I need to do is back substitute. Uh, replacing u with cosine of x, so my answer is negative, parentheses, the cosine of x, to the fourth over four plus c. And there's my solution. And now you're beginning to integrate much, much harder functions than you've integrated before. Well, let's take a look at the next example. Problem number four. Question number four, this kind of integrating a fraction. When I integrate a fraction, the hard stuff seems to be in the denominator. So. In terms of classic u substitution, there's a standard trick. I would let u equal to the hard stuff in a fraction, that's, that's going to be, in this case, the denominator. u is equal to x squared plus 6x plus 15. Now I'm going to do du, take the derivative. The derivative of this would be 2x plus 6 dx. Remember, you always put your dx telling you you're taking derivative with respect to x, taking the classic derivative here. But now, I don't have a 2x plus 6 in the problem, but can you clean this guy up? Well, I could factor out a 2 out of it. That would give me du is equal to 2 times, factoring out the 2, x plus 3 dx. And you'll notice that there's an x plus 3 dx and there's an x plus 3 dx in the problem. Remember, that's a pattern of u substitution. Whatever you let u equal to, the derivative du has got to be in the problem up to a constant. So try to factor out the constant. You can always manipulate constant. Move the constant to the other side, in this case divide by 2. It gives me 1 half of du equals x plus 3 dx. So when I substitute, this is the integral. You can't change the focus of the problem. This is a division problem, but you let u be the denominator. And the x plus 3 dx that's left over, x plus 3 dx gets replaced with 1 half du. I understood when the, I've moved all the stuff to the back, there's a 1 for placement for my numerator there. But I am going to clean this up, putting my constant 1 half out front, the integral of 1 over u du, and once again, it has turned into a formula that I have memorized. 
So one half is a constant, holds over the, the integral of one over u to u is the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. Pure memorization on that one. And then the last step you do is back substitution. So my answer is going to be one half the natural log of the absolute value of x squared plus 6x plus 15, because that's what we let u equal to, plus c. And there is my solution. You are beginning to learn how to integrate harder and harder functions. And let's try one more. Now this one's just a slight difference because I put bounds on it. But you really don't care about the bounds because even with this stuff it's all about integrating it. So just a note that it has bounds on it so your answer is going to have, or your answer is going to be a number when you're done. The area under the curve stuff. You've been programmed personally. There, there it is. So here we go. If I'm going to integrate this, I wouldn't worry about bounds at all. Focus on integrating it. And then again, it's the integral from 0 to 2 of x squared e to the x cubed minus 6 dx. If I'm going to do u substitution on this one, I would let u equal to the exponent, x cubed minus 6. Because this is an e problem, and I have e. Traditionally, I want to let u equal to the exponent. So if u equals x cubed minus 6, du is going to be 3x squared dx. I'm going to move my constant aside. One third du is equal to x squared dx because I'm trying to focus on the variable dx and see if that's in the problem. And it sure is. There's my x squared dx. Whatever I let u equal to, du has got to be in the problem. The derivative is going to be in the problem up to the constant. Move the constant aside. So forget the bounds. This turns into the integral. This was an e problem raised to the u. And the x squared dx gets replaced with one-third du. Now, for this problem, I'm just going to worry, uh, not worry about my bounds right now. I'm focusing on integrating this guy. I'll put the bounds in in just a second. So this is equal to, I'm going to clean it up, one-third goes out front, the integral of e to the u du. Now, we have to integrate it. What is the integral of e to the u du that you have memorized? Well, the integral of e to u du is e to the u plus c, but I'm not going to put a plus c on this one because I have bounds. When you have bounds, you don't put the plus c because you're going to have to do the fundamental theorem of calculus of plug in top minus plug in bottom. So, but I do have to back substitute. So this becomes one third e to the u, but u was x cubed minus six. And instead of putting uh, you know plus c, we're going to put our bounds from zero to two. So one extra uh, hoop to jump through when you got bounds is after you integrate it, now I'm going to plug in top minus plug in bottom. This will be one third e to the two cubed minus six minus one third e to the zero cubed minus six. Plug in top minus plug in bottom. So I end up getting my solution of, let's see here, this will be one third e, well 2 cubed is 8 minus 6 is 2, minus 1 third e, 0 cubed is 0, minus 6 is negative 6. And on this one I could make it look good by say factoring out the 1 third, so this is 1 third e squared minus e to the negative 6, and there is my solution. But again, the whole focus of u-substitution, which is very, very, very important technique in calculus, all other techniques of integration build off of this u-substitution, is you, with appropriate u-substitution when you're integrating it, with the appropriate u, you go du, and you turn the hard problem into an easier problem with a formula you have memorized, and then you, after you integrate it, you back substitute to get your solution, and when you got bounds, you, you just plug in top minus plug in bottom to get your numerical value. I hope this has been helpful, and I'll see you on the next video.